Billiard Network in cooperation with Langoni Cues brings you another great matchup in cooperation with Langoni Cues. It's Sanchez Ruiz versus Sanjin Pelanovic right here I'm the Terminator Niels Feyen gonna do nice commentary for you hopefully <laughs> and there you see immediately the power of Sanchez game he has really got one of the strongest breaks in the world I should say because he's breaking good in all formats all games you name it eight ball nine ball from the side, break from the box. He's been successful in all areas. He's really a force to be reckoned with. We spoke about this before in other matches. Check those out if you haven't seen them. But um, Sanchez has been on the tour for quite a while. But in my opinion, what has made him so successful in the last few years, and also I have to add David Elkady's success in his game to that story is those two living very very close together they're only a couple of hundred meters away from each other and they're practicing I can say almost every day and if you have that for your pool game if you can spar with somebody of your own level that frequently that is really gonna help your game out Big tip for, I wouldn't say beginner players, but intermediate to advanced players. If you can play guys that are the same level or even better than you, that is really going to help your game. Because that way, ooh, look at that shot there. Try to play it down to the rail, but the point of the side almost helped him to get nice shape on the uh, four for the corner towards our point of view missed the two however I believe Sanjin I believe with a shot on the two the angle is a little bit tricky I think he can either see the two or just hit the rail before <clears throat> he needs to bend it slightly a little bit touchy this because the seven and nine can get in the way look he hit it just too thin just making sure he got some action on the ball and I wouldn't say per se that that is bad luck because he wants to play the cue ball into the open otherwise the seven and nine have him hooked therefore he's taking a chance getting some action on the cue ball and that five and six were also very big balls so he took a calculated risk and the coin just flipped to the side that he didn't want it to roll to. So that's a bit of a mental bummer there. You get a nice chance with a ball hanging in the hole. But as, as we have seen in the game of pool, sometimes a hanging ball and you're straight in on it. Meaning you're facing the ball head on from the side pocket to the corner pocket those are really tough to play position on if you're on the short rail or the long rail it's much easier to play those shots so when you can always try to play position to those rails Ooh, great attempt watch the five Oh, the thing that made him cry made him laugh this time. First roll hurt him. And the second roll of the match went his way. Tough kick here on this four. Ideally, you might want to kick this soft. And just kick two rails and graze the four. That's pretty good too. He went one reel. Playing that harder is big risk for a sellout. Could use the eight here. He plays it thin. The four will always hit the eight and he can try to do something with this five ball. Maybe three reels. He's going one reel. 
that's nice too. Wonder if we're gonna see Sanchez Ruiz take out the jump stick and maybe try to bank this in the side. Don't see a whole lot else he can really do except kick one reel, short reel, and try to hit it the same way he just did. If the four is not froze. And just to finish that story from the beginning, the sparring with Sanchez and Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda. You name it that also really helped David's game because he has been around for a good 25 years was always a good player but never really performed consistently and in the last five years he's really maybe even a bit longer he's won a couple of Euro tours multiple European championships uh, much more consistent competitor on the matchroom circuit. Semi-final at the... Ooh, that was... He hit it, but sell out. Um, I believe a semi-final in the UK Open. And they're making each other better. That's a big thing. So Sanchez now. Another great opportunity. Everything's wide open. Biggest thing here is get a nice angle on the seven to fall on the right long rail for the eight. Then it's pretty much curtains, this rack. And the way I see it, the angle that he has now on the seven from where the cue ball is would be ideal, just a bit closer. That way you can go one rail or two rails and lay it on that side rail. It all depends what kind of angle he has now. See, you don't really want to play the seven in the right corner because if you fall straight in or even slightly high on that seven, you gotta you gotta mess around with the nine. But he has no choice now. Has to do that. So the key here is to fall slightly under straight in, so you can stun through that long rail. Key shot coming up. Just overran it. See a little facial expression there. He has to baby this to make sure he doesn't get far from that long rail. Or he's got to go up and down. Side to side, I should say. Yep. The angle was too severe. Nice recovery shot there. Excellent speed. Might have to work on his shirt size a little bit, as we can see. <laughs> and this is to get off to a 1-0 start and him breaking in the next game. And with the alternate break format, that's pretty nice, especially on these Euro Tour tables. Get a lot of action on the break. Sanjin has a great break from the left, only breaks from the left in nine ball. Ooh, yep, the four was gonna get there. The one hit the point, he still has a nice bank. Definitely go for this. Natural three railer towards the middle of the table. Long rail, bottom rail in the kitchen, and then another side rail, and then float back out towards the middle of the table. Force over the corner. So any kind of shot on the two, decent shot, and it's pretty much right away game over. Five, six, seven, nine are all connected. So this right here is like making a nine. It's 
about 80% make if you're a pretty good banker. If you're not, then set up these shots. They come up all the time in rotation games. It's got to go. It's got to go. Mm, we spoke about a decent shot. He has to come with one more now. Got to avoid that seven, draw out of that contact. Not sure if he can do it. If he hits the seven, he wants to hit the high side so he can come back towards the middle of the table. Not an easy shot. It's tough sometimes to divide your focus, put concentration into making the ball. But you might also have to contact the seven. There you see. That was the tough part. Discussed it with himself. Understandably, that was a golden opportunity to go 2 0. Sanjin is a good jumper. Not sure if he can do that with this one. Looking at the kick. Pooh. Very tough shot. I'm not sure if he can get if he can open that angle to make the four again. Because that six is really big. I can understand a two-rail kick here to this bottom rail where we stand. I believe if he hits between the middle diamond and that right diamond with a little bit of running right spin, he's going to go towards that corner. Wouldn't be the worst shot. He's looking at it now. I mean, he's in a tough spot anyway. It's Even if he kicks this ball in gently... He's not going to get a great shot on the five. He's got to get out of this trap. That's the main thing. He's going to go for the jump with his playing stick. Pooh. Can't pull the trigger yet. Now he's getting the jump stick. He's going to go all out here. This is make or break. Can't fault him. The hop is crucial on this shot. How far the cue ball hops. If it hops too far, it's going to shoot off the table. He can't pull the trigger. This shot is so tough. So what else are you going to do? Still not sure, going back to the playing stick now. Oof. Went for a masse around the six. Kind of got away with that one. That could have scratched very easily. Let's see what Sanchez has up his sleeve now. Also, very tough shot. He's looking to make this in the corner. And perhaps with just a tip of left spin coming back in between the 5 6 and landing under the 5. That way, if he overcuts it, he might get a snooker. And if he makes it. He's got a shot on the five. Look, this is no luck. This is played. Very intelligent shot. We call that a two-way shot. Missed it on the pro side. Overcut it with good speed and good direction. 
this engine going back to the jump stick now. If he hits this head on, he might fluke it in or carry it in off the six in the side, for example. Could also go for the cut. Oof, banked it in. Not sure what he was playing. He might have played it there off the six. Because if you make contact with the six, sometimes you make the six, you can make the four. So it's not bad percentages. Still another, another tester here. And again, this wouldn't be a bad shot to play, to overcut it slightly and let the cue ball go in between the six and nine. Because if you just play this all out, rolling it in and you miss it, it's game over. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nice shot. Put all his eggs into one basket, got rewarded. Gonna make one more nice positional shot. Couple of options. Can draw it with low left into the kitchen and then to the other side. Can play it with a high ball and a touch of right spin. Going for that. Oh, careful for the corner. Oof. Tricky route, played it beautifully. Him awfully close to contacting the nine. There's always not going to be a lot of risk on that shot, but he went for it. Little body movement there, but good speed. And things look here like a nice 2-0. Blue diamond chalk. One of the best chalks out there. Been using it for at least 15 years. And I love it. Ooh. No shot on the two. Tough to get going here for Sanchez. Might have to push out for a jump or a kick. Or go for the jump now himself. <clears throat> nope, I don't think he can jump this. Let's see, where can he push out? Might have to push out for kind of a straight jump where you can't play position on the three easily. If you push out to get by, if you push on the eight, for example, you give him an angle. The jump is very makeable, and you give him an angle to swing around a couple of rails to play position for the three, so it could be game over. However, if you try to play maybe in between the 3-8 and get behind the 9. Maybe it's not available, but sort of speak, try to get behind that 9. Now the jump is almost straight in. You can't really lose with it, you can't really win with it, but it buys you another inning at the table where you can make a difference in this rack. That's sometimes all you can do. See, now he's looking at playing it there. It's a nice tip I heard many years ago. Try to avoid pushing to the same side of the table against good players because it makes the execution rather easily. However, that was clever because that takes away the safety behind the five now. Had that five still be, been there, he could have hit the right side of the two as the player sees it. And go a couple of rails, two hits the six, and cue ball goes around and hooks him behind the five. 
takes that five out of the game now. Leaves a bank. That's kind of the same story as that jump. You can make the you can make the bank, but how are you gonna win? How are you gonna get shape? So I wouldn't be against giving this back. Just for that reason right there. It was super tough to do anything productive position wise. I can understand him. He's thinking that bank is maybe 70% make, but if the position of that shot is only 20%, then maybe you gotta ask yourself, hmm, shouldn't I give this back? Could make a big difference here in the start of this match. Like now he's faced with a tough kick. Interesting to see if he's gonna play it gently or with a lot of speed. Just avoiding that side pocket. Hitting the high side of that three really opens up that scratch line. Good attempt. A couple of rotations on that three and he would have had a nice safety out of it. Now, let's see Sanchez's firepower. This is an opportunity. He's got to draw out of that rail. Not easy, but if he strokes it well, he can get it back to almost where the three is now. Slightly harder would be even better to avoid being hampered by the nine on the shot for the six. Playing it softly would get him to the rail, maybe. I think the angle's a bit severe for that as we see it, but let's see. Tester. done I think a bit of follow here would get him smoothly off that bottom rail and sort of straight in on the seven which would be great I think drawing this no it was fine for him it looked a little shallow that angle but he managed it well just composing himself wants to get on the board bit of a funny angle here he's going to just minimize the position cheating the pocket there so he can stop the cue ball a bit more A golden saying from Buddy Hall was, if you have position, don't play position. That was a good example on that seven. Didn't do too much. Took what the table gave him and ran out. Let's see how Sanjin's going to reply. Beautiful break. Once again, hitting that point of the side. And that is a nightmare for players. I know all about it. That side pocket on that one ball is like the worst thing that can happen on your break because you never know where it's going to go then. Sometimes it causes illegal breaks. Had that one gone in, he would have made three balls on the break, shape on the three. Now he's faced with having to play safe. Momentum stopper, but that's part of the game. You got to take it on the chin. Roll with it. Big question here, can he see the right side of the one as he views it that would perhaps open up a bank 
quite sure he can play this perhaps a half ball hit. One ball behind the seven nine, Cuba behind the six two rails. What is he gonna do with his draw? Hmm. Okay. I don't know what he had planned with the one. I think he got a snooker out of it. Tough to see if he's fully snookered. If he's not. Yeah, he is. If not, had he been able to play this one very thinly, then the only shot really there is play it towards that third diamond where the 8 is. And with a tip of inside, try to use the 5-8 as blockers. However, he's fully hooked, so he, I think he has to hit this hard. Yeah. Got away with it. Look at the 9 ball. Ooh, that... One ball turned last second, turned towards the pocket a bit. Which means Sanjing can still hit this ball if he crosses it. So <clears throat> hit the left side as we see it. Bank it softly towards the three. And cue ball off the side rail under the six, seven, nine. Great chance to hook. Sanchez Ruiz right back here. Watch the speed. Watch the speed. Don't give that combo up that easy. That might be a slightly too easy of a jump. Just hit it 5% too hard. Which is uh, easy to say here doing commentary when the adrenaline's out there pumping and you have to execute a delicate safety. Oh. He might be able to just see this ball. Yeah. A massive chance here for Sanchez Ruiz to make it 2 2. It's not the combo he's concerned about, it's the position of the one right after. He's looking at the aiming point, but also measuring the speed of the one. If he has to do anything special or if he can just make it make it uh, playable with a high ball. He's jacking up. Interesting. Oh, double hit that. Quite fortunate. Wanted to send the one to the other corner, double hit it. Part of the game. Can draw nicely now to the five to play it in the same corner. Just what the doctor ordered for him. Middle of the table. Again here, two rails. Touch of right spin, middle of the table. Kind of three shots in a row here when you want to try to go for the middle. That would be ideal. That's kind of the only thing in Sanchez's game that I would really think he can improve is his body movement in his stroke. He still has a ton of movement when he hits the ball and under pressure that can hurt you. Now of course he's one of the most the hottest player maybe on the planet. But still that's one of the things that maybe the only thing that really he can improve. There see the stroke and the movement under pressure, they can get to you. 
two to two. Pro star table by Langoni and Leo. Great table. I have it at home. It's like a charm. Back to the match. Look at that break. Awesome break by Sanchez. Ton of action. Great control. Makes the one in the side. That's the difference. Sanjin was hitting it on the point. Sanjin, or Sanchez makes it. Can he cut this in? Avoid hitting the nine. Hit the rail and then bump into the nine to stop the cue ball. I am not sure. Then he would have to draw into it. And make sure the nine doesn't get in the way of the shot on the three. Tricky positional play coming up here. Doesn't like it. I don't blame him. hard to pull the trigger on these you have to make a commitment whether you like it or not and there's a big risk involved he's still measuring it up it's really hard to control the cue ball he's looking now if he hits this nine the nine's gonna bump the reel and it might snooker him right back on that three. I think initially he was even looking at a bank. A bank with draw. I wouldn't even fault him. See, that's what he's looking at now. If he banked that ball, he can draw straight back. Yep, that's what he's doing. Can't pull the trigger. <laughs> You gotta really commit. Big tip here for beginning beginner to intermediate players. And he saw, he saw that extra commitment that he made. Nice bank. Position was a bit off, but the commitment part of the shot was very nicely done. Big example there. He took that extra five seconds, got up from the shot again, fully committed, and then went down. We've all done that many times where you're not quite a hundred percent sure, but only 80 or 90. And that's when little mistakes happen on those types of shots. Whoa, a lot of movement there again, but nice shot on the side. Ooh. The way I see it here with follow. He can get natural shape. I think it's going to go to the side rail, bottom rail, and then in between the 6-9. Just with follow, no spin. Otherwise, you got to draw it in between the 6-7 off that rail. Bit more risk involved. Still not comfortable yet. A lot of checking, making sure, aiming. Here comes the top spin. Nope, the draw fooled us, fooled me. Now, is he going to go for the middle of the table or is he going to stun it harder and play the six in the low left? I think that's the smarter play. Yeah, that way you take out all the risk of getting snookered. One more smooth positional shot. Nicely done. Three to two, great break, nice run out. A 
Let's see if he can make the one here in the side. Watch the one again on the point. But a shot this time. Or is the four... Oh, the four didn't hit the line. That means give up the table. Nice break. And he came within, within a millimeter to make that one in the side. Didn't get there, plus the illegal break. That's a body blow. Three breaks in a row where he hasn't been able to produce the run out. to play this one in the side. Big question is, can he draw himself away from the contact with the nine and still kill the speed enough that he can be on the two? Oh, he tried. that's what happened. He made sure he wasn't going to contact the nine. Your brain says, sure, we can do that. We can avoid that ball. We just have to hit it slightly thicker, which means missing it. <laughs> and we've all done that that's actually another commitment example where you your brain is trying to trick you because there's so much going on on that shot you really have to tell yourself okay i have to do this to avoid the contact i have to make this ball so i gotta hit it there let's not fall into this trap Got away with that one, tried to play it for the low left. Just cut it a hair too much, but he has a shot on the side. Great opportunity now to fall nicely on this three and convert this opportunity into a scoring chance. This is again like making the nine here. Everything else is connected. Nicely done bit too low. If you're looking at going off the rail, I'm not sure if the cue ball's going towards the six too much, see? I think he kind of has to draw this very tricky. It's like a pinch draw, very snappy and soft. No. Wants to go around the six, three rails. Not feeling very well, as you can see right now. Desperately wants to make this ball and get shape. Yeah, there's that little pinch draw. Be careful with the six. Just got there. Nice shot. I think with a bit more elevation, he could have slowed the cue ball down even a couple of balls more. But he made a excellent, an excellent um, attempt there already. Needs one more big shot. Has to go side reel, side reel again. And on a new slippery cloth, they can get away from you, so can't take this for granted. Almost there. I think he's going to play six in the side. Yeah. When he falls on his six nicely, then it's game over. Nice speed. And we got 3-3 three, three on the board here in a second. Got 
interesting start of this match. Nip and tuck. Oh, the nice Giotto cases by Langoni. This one is the Florencia. Check those out. Beautiful designs, high quality. Boom. Ooh, is that an illegal break? I think it is. Two, four, six, eight. Didn't make the corner ball. And now the momentum has totally shifted. This is a golden opportunity. Nice big corner pocket here at this seven. Just making sure of the position. He has to wait for the player next to him. Great chance to like open up this match, take the lead, and then break yourself. After just running that last game for 3-3, this is really a great chance. Oh, oh boy. Just caught it too thin. Thought in his mind he could never miss that ball because of the seven. And that's what fooled him. What a momentum changer. Sanchez is going for the straight draw. Sort of okay here. Could have gone for a, a real first shot there and try to go around the three. Big shot coming up, low left. Off the side rail, let the left spin grab. There's a mark there on the table, a nice white mark. Oh. Or is it a shadow? It's between the five and six. If you take a, make a line from the five to the six, kind of halfway, there's a, a white mark. That would be a super spot to get the cue ball to. He always elects to play these shots with an open bridge. He's worked on a snooker game over the years somewhat also. Good positive stroke. Got into it a bit too much. Might have to go two rails here now. Play the six in the same corner as the four. Nice intense battle here. Nobody really taking the full initiative of this game yet. Oh, there was that second reel. Oh, man. Got away with that one. Grazed the seven, but still off the reel. Contacted at six. And has shape. Got two options. He can play this with a little bit of inside. Or outside. And then choose the corner pocket you want to. Play the seven into personal preference. It's going around it. Oof, what a big bump that was. Massive bounce on that first reel. I think he can still just get there. If he can play this with a high ball, he could land it on the line, the kitchen line. Or he's got to be more aggressive and play it in the corner. And play two of the same shots. See if he wants to land this on the line. 
again, it's a lot of shots that demand that commitment because your brain wants to play closer position to this eight ball, but it's just not really there. So you have to commit to a tougher shot on the eight, but at least you're going to have a shot. You've got to forget about this previous one. You gotta play a trick in your mind where your opponent just missed and he gave you this. And that's all you can do is get a nice shot on the eight. That was pretty good. So you got even above the the line. The only thing here is he's gotta roll this in. Nice shot there, good speed. Stay down on that one, much better. 4-3. Sandin still kicking himself, of course. Has to capitalize now on this break. Let's watch the one. The corner ball is going to fly in. Nicely done. Look at that. What a difference that makes. What a break. Awesome cue ball. One went in the side. Made four balls. Slightly hampered by the six. This is again like making the nine right here. Nicely done. Very personal preference shot coming up. You can stun it off the rail. You can play it for the corner, for the side, with inside, going three rails. I think I kind of like that. Yeah. That brings you into the line of position off that third rail. See, he still had like half a meter to get the same shot on the six, so high percentage there. You're not crossing the line, you're coming into the line. That's always the best way to play positional shots if they're available. <clears throat> He's composing himself. Using that swagger. little punchy stun draw it's not a draw and it's not a stun it's like in between very handy shot a tip higher than draw practice that one four to four with the nice luna nera graphite shafts from longoni for the new break cue as well as the playing cues Started playing with those since the COVID period. I thought I would never play with a graphite shaft, but I really enjoy it. The consistency is amazing, especially when you're a traveling player. The shaft will never warp. It uh, doesn't demand as much cleaning, talcum powder, all that stuff. Personal, of course, but I really enjoy the shaft. It's great. A lovely break from Sanchez, making the one there. No problem with illegalness on that one. Touchy shot on this two. Has to roll it. Question is, will he go for the side? Or will he go for the corner on the three? Going for the corner, he's got to hit it even softer. I think the side would be better. He can just put an extra 10% of speed on this. No, it went for the corner. Beautifully done. Stay down on it nice. Lee. These two are really making a battle out of it. 
We're halfway to score 4-4. Four, four. Both great breakers. Ooh, grazing that five just creates a minor problem. But with a high ball, we can still avoid contacting the nine. We should be okay. Using a couple of rails to let out a stroke, get into the open. And I was just thinking, like sometimes in these tournaments, maybe day one you play one match, and then this is day two. Perhaps you played another one, then you're waiting five, six hours, and this is your third match in maybe 40 hours, and that's uh, a big match. And sometimes you're just slightly rusty. You need a couple of matches to really get going. And usually in the, on the Euro Tour, that second and third match are those bigger matches where you sometimes have to go through a bit of a struggle. And when you get through that, then you just feel a bit more comfortable. You're deeper into the tournament, you've got another match under your belt, and it looks like this is one of those games. Because both players are not really in full flight yet. 5-4 Sanchez. focus on that break I was gonna say he got lucky that he made the corner ball took a bit of speed off of that one I would say 10% if you go back and look at the other breaks it's just slightly harder still a bit unfortunate to not get a third ball over the line but if that two ball didn't drop he was gonna be bone dry anyway in the sense that um, only one ball would have gone in and I think the two ball would have stayed there in the bottom also. So just a tad too soft and a huge moment for Mr. Sanchez to put a stamp on this match to go 6-4 and him breaking. Trickiest thing here is the six. Gotta get nicely on that six. Well done. Now, is he gonna play under the nine? Or is he gonna stay above it? And he has to work his way around this eight ball. Interesting. Again, got to commit. So he doesn't want to flirt with this eight. So opting to play to the shorter side of the six, but that means there's more room for position on that side of the table. However, you got a funny, ang a funny angle on this six ball. It's not easy at all to get on the seven now. Still like his choice but he's got to come with a big shot here and one more wiping his cue wiping his cue down Big moment. He 
respecting the moment, taking his time, knows this is very important. Sanchez now in the lead, six to four. Oh, fast forward break. Has a shot on the one. Gonna play some speed ball, speed pool. Went for the safe. It's a bit too fast for uh, for my brain to uh, digest. <laughs> and now we're back in business. A lot of things happening there within 30 seconds. <laughs> Let's see here. folks how'd you like the stroke on that one talk about a z stroke beautiful shot that should make him feel a lot better careful now though the only mental trap here is that your brain doesn't feel like you're the man like your ego gets in the way. Like, did everybody see that shot? That's me. That's me. And then boom, your focus is gone, and you make a and you make a blunder. Sanjin has too much experience for that, but that's just a little tip for intermediate players. If you do something great, stay humble. Finish the rack. Then it's really cool. Nice shot there, staying above that eight. Personal preference, you can stun this out with some right spin, or you can follow it with a tip of left spin. Yep, staying above the nine, coming into the line of position. And again, you will see uh, most of the professional players stun this one out with a bit of right spin. Just one tip going out of that corner, two rails. There you see, that's the most natural way to play that shot. You take away the bad contact, take away the nervousness in your stroke. You can hit it with authority. One ball in the side, two ball. Going once, going twice. Hmm. If the six is not frozen, this is still an offensive opportunity. If it is frozen, then it becomes a bit tougher. Hmm. trickiest part is if you cut this ball the two is not going to get much movement so you have to put some speed on it but that way it's much harder to control the cue ball oh very nicely done there did you see that two he massayed or i shouldn't say massay he squeeze that cue ball nicely 
two rails in that way with the speed he got some action on the two massaged that two ball into the open I wanted to say this one is critical with the speed watch this gotta go down just so two more rotations would have been great tough position here all right we're gonna do the fast forward again bear with me couple of safety exchanges oh wow nicely done Gonna stay on the open side of the shot on the five instead of crossing it over to where the cue ball is now and he's risking it getting behind the eight and nine. This way you're never gonna be snookered. You're playing a slightly more closer position, but you're taking out that risk of getting hooked. Here we go, this is going to be for 6-6. Six, six. Huh. He's looking to cross it over. The way it looks to me is like with some low left, he can just get to where he is now. Maybe just a ball f further. No. That's nice. Probably going to draw this. Six six in the making. There's the beautiful designs from Langoni since 1945. They've been making jam up Italian quality cues. Lovely break from Sanchez. Is he sensing the moment, ladies and gentlemen? Is he going to deliver a couple of big breaks, quick runouts to stay in the lead and close out this game? He's under it now with 6 4. Sanchez coming back. Big shot. Has to slightly draw this to get on the left side of this three avoid contacting the four he has to dig into this cue ball but at, a, at the same time with a soft pace see i don't think that roll shot's going to get there i think he's going to hit the four unless you want to do that on purpose let's find out Looks to me with just drawing a tip of left he can get there. But easier said than done. There's nothing easy about this shot. See, he's looking at hitting the right side of the four. Body movement fools me sometimes where I think he misses it. Optimal position here. It's a nice angle to let your stroke out. You can blast this two reels out of the corner, stun with a tip of right. Don't have to baby it. A lot of room here. Boom, boom. Out into the open. It 
composing himself again. Oh, putting a lot of insight on it. Interesting. Took some risk, got rewarded. Didn't want to fool with that nine. Get behind it. The, the rails are slightly bouncy, so he says, I'm going to put some right spin on it and get totally away from the nine. Seven, six. Let's watch the six ball and the one ball. That could cost them the whole match right there. The six rattled out. I think that was unfortunate. I think he hit that break. Got a lot of nice action on it, but those two balls there in the low corner, low left, just collided. He could have made them both. You see that happen now and then. And also now and then they kiss each other out of the pocket and it looks like you made a really poor break because of the illegal hit or the illegal result but actually it was maybe under a millimeter of difference of making three balls on the break now the timing of course couldn't have been any worse for Sanjin you're giving up an open table you're playing a man that's on fire. Just making sure where he wants to get on the four. He's making up his mind of where he wants to be for the five. Just slightly overthinking this, but I, I don't blame him. I mean, it's, a, it's a big moment. But Sanchez is such an intuitive player. Yeah, that's... I think that's what he was thinking of right at the beginning already. It's not an easy thing to do sometimes when the pressure kicks in to trust your gut. Right the first instant, you want to just calm your nerves slightly, take an extra look, play the percentages. And like I said, sometimes in these matches, you maybe get one rack of warm up. You've been waiting for five, six, seven hours all day for this one game. And it can feel like at the end of the match you're finally warmed up. <laughs> it takes you the whole match to get really going because, yeah, you, there's no practice tables and that's just how it is. Drawing slightly above the seven here. Wants to get straight in on this eight so he can draw it nicely back for the nine in the side. You don't want to give yourself any big angle here in this eight ball. Careful. Ooh, ooh. Not out of the woods yet. He has to judge this point of the side. He's not going to get the easiest shot on the nine, but he's very close to it. That's a good thing. So the pocketing is easy. It's all about negotiating this point. Don't take too much risk because then you scratch. Take what the table gives you here. You're going to get a slight cut on the nine. That is just how it is. Unless you hit the point. Nicely done there. Nice. Displayed some nice knowledge for 8-6. 
Whoa, there's me again with the flames line, the sparkle line. Check those out on the terminatorshop.com if you're interested. Nice break. Ooh. Six and a one collided, but not in the most favorable way. Has no shot on the one, I believe. Can he two rail this one out of there and use the six as a blocker? I think he can do that. Big question is can he avoid the four ball with the one? Doesn't look like he can make this ball, or does he have us fooled? There's that six. Watch the seven. I think that's good enough. I think that's good enough. A lot of movement on the stroke. If Sanjin can see this ball, he could put the cue ball right behind the seven. You have to forget about this two ball. Even if the one hits the two, I think you have to go all out full blooded to get this cue ball behind the seven. That is if you can see it now. If he can't, he's taking out the jump stick. That shows us he cannot. Then, my goodness. How are you going to stop the speed of the cue ball? You want to go for the seven again? Two rails? Use that seven to block the speed? But what on earth is the one going to do, people? I think you want to come with a nice hop so you can reduce some of the speed. Then try to hit it in such a way where the one is going to go back into the kitchen and you can use the seven. Look at this. Yeah, that, I mean, that was such a tough shot. Can't fault him for a anything there. That was pretty much, pretty much checkmate. Needed a lot of luck to get away with that one. Now we know nine balls, 10, 15 percent luck, so could have happened but Sanchez laid down a nice shot gets a first crack at this one ball just checking that he doesn't scratch in the side doesn't like it Nice battle here between these youngsters. They're really fighting hard for every point. Showing us all the skills, kick shots, jump shots, bank shots. Match play, commitment. See, Sanchez is terrified to scratch in the side or the corner. Either pocket he makes this one in, he's afraid of scratching. <laughs> That's how the ball's laying. I think he's going to stun it. Try to avoid the four. Oh, missed the ball. That was the tough part. He wanted to avoid that four ball. And all the focus went into making that position. And that... Oh, that is the trap of that kind of shot that you take your eye off pocketing that ball. Massive chance for Sanjin. Low right. Get back to where he is right now. Do not hit the three. This is not a draw, this is stun draw. The spin has to do the upward 
motion there. There, that nice example. See, had he put more draw on that ball, he would have contacted the three and been in trouble. Now the five passes the seven. So all he needs is just a little angle on the on the four, yeah, and then he can swing it around a couple of rails for the six, five to the six. Excellent. Hmm. Gonna draw this. Sure, if I like to stun better and just get to the middle of the table, just because of this reason, if you get straight in, now it's funky. If you go to the middle of the table there, ish, then you can go out of that corner a couple of reels. Easier set than done. Maybe he wanted to stay clear of that seven. Oh, man. Had to cheat the pocket slightly. Oh, and there could be a potential 5-9. Oh, man. I wanted to cheat the pocket a hair to get better shape on the 6. What a let off for Sanchez Ruiz. Missed the 1. Gets back to the table. Not an easy 5-9, but he's back at the table. Anti-climax, unfortunately. Would have been great to see Sanchez run out there and make it 8-7. Tricky shot, though, this one. Because the balls are fairly close. You have to judge the friction between these balls. Taking an extra look at it. Is he playing the five or is he playing the nine? No, he's definitely looking at the nine. It's a pretty severe cut. Having another look at the at the line, another look at the five. Shot. Good match. Sanchez Ruiz very relieved there. Nice match from both guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out these other matches here. Pick another good one. Get some nice commentary from Earl, Jeremy, myself. Follow the channel. Make sure you click the like button, leave a comment, it's really going to help spread the video out to more players just like you, and I hope to see you in a next video. Take care.